Hello everyone, welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts, or should I say, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate video. Breaking down Sora's references that are in Smash. Because there are plenty of references to break down and talk about, discuss, analyze, uh, that are potentially from Kingdom Hearts. And there's definitely a lot. As a big Kingdom Hearts fan and a big Smash Brothers fan, Sakurai and his team honestly did a lot to show many references. Uh, in terms of uh, gameplay mechanics, animations, uh, to just, again, simple references that are in within Smash Brothers, and I love it so much. And this is going to be one of our final videos talking about its references, and in the end, I have bonus references or um, revised references, because uh, in my previous video, I kind of misinterpret some certain aspects, so you're going to see the revisions of, of that in the end of uh, this segment. Um, but for the most part, we're going to break down classic mode Sora. And obviously, if you're not aware of me talking about references, there are big spoilers uh, in this. So if you're planning to play Kingdom Hearts or you're currently playing Kingdom Hearts and you're playing in blind, please, I highly recommend to click off the video because these are big spoilers um, in this <laughs> uh, in this video. So there's a fair warning. Hey, but if you want to look at look at it, by all means, go for it. So let's start with the first stage or the first level in classic mode, Sora's, Sora's Route, which is uh, takes place in Hollow Bastion, which shows Link and Young Link. Originally, I thought that they were just trying to showcase a heartless or a darker version of Link and Young Link. And when I looked into it more, considering the setting, which is at Hollow at Hollow Bastion and how Link's hair is white and the and the characters I really think they are trying to interpret is young Riku and Ansem which is a big reference from Kingdom Hearts 1's boss fight where we meet Riku for the third time in Hollow Bastion and see that he has been taken over by Ansem also both Links have the same color of hair as Riku and Ansem so the second stage is set at Sky World or whatever it's called basically it's Kid Icarus's uh, place and you're fighting off many Mr. Game & Watches of all different sizes. And this is a, a reference to Kingdom Hearts 3 when you visit and roam around Mount Olympus, which is the Hercules world in Kingdom Hearts, uh, for the first time in Kingdom Hearts 3. The reason why is because, first of all, it's the setting. In Sky World, you're able to see the clouds and the background representing that we are definitely up in the sky, just like how it is in Mount Olympus. And the different Mr. Game & Watches represent the variety of uh, Heartless we fight once we visit and roam around there. Uh, because they show different shapes and sizes of uh, Mr. Game & Watches. So again, it represents the variety of Heartless we're fighting in Mount Olympus. So it's a pretty straightforward interpretation, but the little details in this fight is pretty nice. Another straightforward interpretation was meeting Cloud in an arena setting. For those who don't know, this is a reference to Kingdom Hearts 1 where Cloud and Sora meet for the first time in Mount Olympus and faced off. What makes this fight detailed is the setting because as soon as you spawn into this fight there are no platforms at all and it replicates the flat surface arena that Mount Olympus has in Kingdom Hearts 1. I think I'll pass. In this level, this level was sort of hard to interpret considering it could be different things. What I narrowed it down to was since all the Robins were wearing black coats, I was assuming this is an organization boss fight they did, possibly from Chain of Memories. It's important to note that they included a female Robin out of the three that could possibly represent Larxene from the Organization 13. Uh, another interpretation I had in mind that it can be representing uh, fighting all three Xehanorts in one of the last boss fights in Kingdom Hearts 3, and female Robin potentially represents young Xehanort, due to the long hair, but considering there are different sizes and how all three other versions of Xehanort and Kingdom Hearts 3 have long hair, I don't think that's the case. I'm sort of leading into Sora fighting organization members in Castle Oblivion, which is from Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Comment down below what you think because I'm really still unsure of it and I would love to hear your interpretation of what reference they're trying to make. So within this level, this wasn't hard to break down but I definitely had two interpretations for this. The first one is the most obvious one which refers back to Kingdom Hearts 1 in, in Sora's first ever boss fight. Considering the physique and setting in which Ganondorf is put in, this is most likely Darkseid.
But my other interpretations is that it can be Xehanort considering how Ganondorf is a good representative for him due to his looks because of how they are both way older people, have gray hair, and the color scheme that Ganon has resembles a lot like Xehanort. And if I were to say what this fight is referenced to, it would be Kingdom Hearts 3's Xehanort's uh, boss fight. But again, it is most likely Darkseid considering it has Darkseid's theme song playing in the background. The stage in the background has this dark and ominous look to it, which is the exact same look in Kingdom Hearts 1. And this is and this Ganondorf is the size as Darkseid would in this fight. Yeah. Last but not least, we have Metal Sora, and at first in this level I thought it could be Anti-Sora or Dark Sora from Kingdom, War Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, either one of the two, but when looking into this more, considering how this Sora is metal and we are fighting in the Station Awakening or Diamond the Heart of Sora, this is a big reference to uh, one of the Kingdom Hearts games, which is Dream Drop Distance, uh, when Riku dives into Sora's heart to save him. As he is in Sora's heart, he encounters a mysterious armor figure surrounded by a veil of darkness which is called Armored Ventus Nightmare who is trying to protect Sora from intruders and who is unaware of Riku. The metal Sora re represents Ventus armor uh, considering he is part of Sora and the metal represents the armor. And one of my all time favorites personally Honestly, like this is just my favorite uh, because uh, seeing the last screenshot or the ending of Sora's classic mode, uh, it shows Sora looking beyond the sea and holding a star. Representing Kingdom Hearts 3's main menu artwork showing Sora by himself holding the Palpu fruit and as a Kingdom big Kingdom Hearts fan who actually understands the context of this artwork, it is such an emotional screenshot to see in Smash, and it's literally one of my favorite classic mode endings, even though it's just a photo. Now we're moving on to the bonus references or the revised references that I potentially made a mistake on my previous videos. So here we go. A bonus reference uh, in this is the dodge roll that Sora has. So in uh, from Kingdom Hearts 1, he has the exact same dodge roll that is in Smash. So every time you're actually shield dodging, shield rolling in Smash Brothers with Sora, it is the same exact animation from Kingdom Hearts 1. Now on to the revisions of these references that I potentially made a mistake on. We're going back to the uh, Spirit Board uh, DLC, which is the Kingdom Hearts 1 of course, and it is the one that references Sora and Kyrie in Destiny Islands. As much as, as, as this is straightforward, knowing it is a reference to Destiny Islands in Kingdom Hearts 1, I wondered why Riku didn't show up here as well. Uh, only Sora did, and to my assumption, I see them replicating the scene where Sora loses the island and Kairi, and that's where he started his whole adventure in Kingdom Hearts 1. This is sort of meta, uh, since we are the ones who quote-unquote steal and literally knock out Kairi from Destiny Islands, just like what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1. Also, her character was Daisy, a princess, representing that she is one of the princesses of Hearts in Kingdom Hearts 1. Now, in my previous video, I interpreted that Ventus' spirit represented him and his armor, or it could be potentially Vanitas. I was actually wrong in one of my interpretations for that. It's actually Ventus and Vanitas uh, that are in the Ventus spirit fight for Smash. Dark Samus represents Vanitas with its colorway, how Dark Samus holds the sword, and ha uh, also has a bit of color to it, representing Vanitas' Keyblade. The stage where we both fight them at resembles the Keyblade Graveyard where both Vanitas and Ven have a long history at. So 
they're even making big references with the environments and i think that's really cool like especially how the keyblade graveyards one of the most important settings within kingdom hearts history and last but not least everyone's favorite crew which is the twilight crew and i mentioned in my previous video that Xion's spirit fight represent her boss fight in 358 over two days where that wasn't the case at all it actually represents her crew when she was part of the organization in 358 over two days in this spirit fight it shows three robins one female robin one tall male robin and one normal sized robin all three fight differently in this fight the tall one only uses fire the female uses magic and one uses a sword basically represents Xion, axel and roxas axel using fire since that's his element Roxas using a sword since it represent, represents him using a keyblade. What was weird though that he was also holding another sword so they may be representing Roxas dual wielding while Xion casts a variety of magic. Uh, what is also unique to this fight is that they stick to their own style of combat so the Robin who is Axel remains casting fire at you while Roxas tries to melee and Xion keeps doing a variety of magic. That's pretty much it and what I got from all the references uh, that I've talked about in these past three videos. So make sure to check out my previous videos if you haven't yet. We definitely go in depth and talk about a lot of the references that uh, Smash does for Kingdom Hearts. And honestly, again, as a big Kingdom Hearts fan, I think this is such an honor to and uh, such an experience just to see Sakurai do all this sort of stuff um, in Smash Brothers. And as what Sakurai says, this is a celebration of gaming and what a way to end the Smash Bros. series. And for those who don't know, uh, literally Smash Brothers and Kingdom Hearts are literally two big franchises that I grew up with when it came to gaming. So this obviously means a lot to me. And uh, making these sort of videos is honestly unreal. It's like two worlds colliding at once, literally. Um, so this was... A whole enjoyment to do with, with these sort of videos and I'm glad people are enjoying the videos so remember to drop a like and subscribe if you like these sort of content and again I hope everyone uh, you know enjoys these sort of videos and I hope everyone has a good day and may your heart be your guiding key peace off